קוזרי סס. ובכמו זה תנוח הנפש לקבל התורה מבלי ספק ובלי מקפוק. He says, my soul will accept the Torah without any problem when a prophet would come to um, slaves and take them out of Egypt and bring them into Eretz Canaan when it's held by seven people that seven nations and those seven nations, each nation was much stronger than the Jewish people And he told them, each, each tribe, you're going to go to this part, you're going to go to this tribe, you're going to go to this part, all of this. And the whole time, what do we see? Miracles. They're getting man from heaven, they're getting their meat, they're get, everything's taken care of. So he says, And he says, I believe, I see that this is because of the greatness of the sender, And the greatness or the, to honor the, um, the messenger. And we could see how great these people are. But he says, but I say, if he would have said that I am a messenger from God, right? Moses would say, in order to make the world flat, what would happen with his message? If he was going to make the world flat? פלאט. Right? It says, literally it says to make the world flat. So it says, so somebody wrote a translation, he would translate it in English, if God sent Moses to make the world flat and tell everybody the world is flat, it would not work. And everybody was like, what does that mean? How does that work? What he means is not to make the world flat, it's but to get the entire world to believe in one God. That is, give the Torah, per se, all humanity. It wouldn't work. If Moses came and did that, he says, he says, if only half of the world would listen to him, would it not then imply there's a pgam, there's, a, there's something wrong with the task given to Moses? Think about this. The rest of the world wouldn't believe in Moses' mission. God sends a messenger. Forget Moses for a second. Let's look at it from the outside. God picks Fred. Fred, holy, holy Fred. Go to the people and tell them, I am the Lord. I've created the universe. They have to listen to me. So Fred starts door to door. And he is 50% successful. Mormon. 50% successful. I don't know, I didn't think of the Mormon. I'm just thinking of a guy, fine, he goes to the mall and says, hear ye, hear ye, God has spoken. I am producing miracles. 50% of the people hear him and 50% say, bubkis. Would we not then say that there is something wrong with that type of a task? See, th- something's up. Why? Because his task wasn't completed. God had one intention, which is what? Reveal himself. Create, make all in the world believe in this religion. Correct? God intends everybody to believe this. Is... Are we still on the example? Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, but that's what the Kuzari says. I'm just telling it to you outside instead okay. of reading word for word. So God is thinking, you know, we've created the new religion of... Metalonism? No, chas v'shalom. Don't drag me into this. <laughs> But, yamakanizations. We believe in the holy yamakas. Right? I'm seeing what I'm saying. So everybody has to wear a yamaka, everybody has to, whatever the rituals are, whatever it is, this is what it is. And we run around, 
the, the messenger runs around and tries to convince people about the, the truth of the religion. And only half of the world agrees with him. Everybody, everybody, half says, yes, makes sense. We're going to put yarmulkes on our forehead like this, because that's what the religion says. And the rest of the world says, forget it. Forget it. We don't believe this. Would it imply that something is wrong with the task that God gave the prophet? I want to say no, because if we're talking about Judaism, we're talking about less than 1% of the world, let alone 50%. But what was Moses' task? Moses' task was probably To give the Torah to whom? The Jewish people. Did he give it to him? Yes. How many of the Jews said no? 80%. How many of the Jews said no? 80%, I thought. Only 20% decided to go with the miracles and... Oh, oh, giving the Torah? Or yeah! Zero Torah, percent all of them didn't have no. a choice. They were standing there with a mountain over their Zero heads and their souls no. left their bodies because God revealed himself to everybody. But that in Mara, they said before that, they said what? We'll do when we will do Na seven ishma. No mountain over their head. He said, Na seven ishma. We will get... And they said, we want to do this. Then comes Har Sinai and they say... We're in. But anyway, what does that mean? Like, do you think the shot is that God lifted the mountain and held it over the head to drop them over their head? Yeah, like they were, they didn't have a choice. So the question, what does that mean? So there's a, there's a, I think the Maral, and I saw it in the, in the uh, Shosh Meisen introduction, where the choice, that he says that he, they reached a level of understanding that they understood that they cannot live without the Torah. They reached a level that they understood that their life would be absolutely meaningless and hopeless without the Torah. And that they were willing to give up their life rather than live without the Torah. That's what that means. It doesn't mean that God lifted them out. Maybe you want to say that, okay. But I'm bringing a source to say, not exactly, is that it is if he that is, he showed them exactly what life, what's the purpose of life. What do you need to do? And how do you need to get there? And he says, now you choose. What do you want? He says, well, of course we want this. We all want pistachio ice cream. And we have to get this. <laughs> but what if the prophet was only 50% successful? Is it a problem? Yes. It's a huge problem. And let's say part of the problem was that the messenger shows up with a book and says, God has given to you this book, right? And you are going door to door now. And you take the book and you open it. And it's in a strange language. No, it's a strange language. Like, what is this? It's Hebrew. God only speaks Hebrew. What? I don't know what it says. This is what God gave. You better just sign up. But I don't know what it says. Does that happen? Is, hasn't that happened with other religions? That's his point. That is his point. Here he is attacking the two other religions of saying, look, if you look at Judaism, the way that it started, they, the, the messenger, right, the prophet, fully fulfilled the purpose for which he was sent. So says the rabbi, Moshe Rabbeinu gave the Torah only to his people and to, his, to the people who speak his language. And those are the people that God created, uh, um, uh, mandated that they would receive the Torah. And all the prophets came only to them. Is that true? Yes? No. No. All the prophets came only to, to Israel. To or from? To. to. There's one prophet that didn't. Jonah. Jonah. Oh, yeah. Jonah. Jonah went to where? To Nineveh. Nineveh. Where's that? Where's that? Oh, it's in Assyria, the long lost empire of Assyria. <laughs> and it was meant to be Pharaoh, wasn't it? As a king. As a Midrash. What? Midrash that um, Paro took over yeah. king of the right. yeah. So he says, the Kuzari says, hakol. He says, but wouldn't it have been better for God to have just made everybody in the world 
the same religion, just... So now he's in the pshat, Judaism is the true religion. The and we're going to stop the king. Judaism is true religion. So he's asking a very good question. Okay, if that's what God wants, then why didn't he just make everybody Jews? It's a very good question. We will pick it up tomorrow. Oh, Rabbi. Cliffhanger. Oh.